Hello again. As you've probably noticed, we're continuing learning about different ways to find derivatives. There's so many different types of functions in math, and so there's a lot of different approaches, which I think that you'll see as we work through these sections is that regardless of what kind of function you come across, sometimes there's going to be multiple ways to do the derivative. And as you learn these new tools, you're going to have to start deciding which method you like more and recognizing when you don't have a choice, when there's only one method you can choose. So I wanted to go through with the product rule, I want to go through three examples. They're similar to examples in your textbook, but I wanted to point out an easier way to remember the formula and little things here and there that could come up. So we'll look at the finding the derivative of each of these functions and also if there's another method for any of them too. So uh, your product rule, instead of memorizing the formula, can be thought of as a, a process if you can just keep track of the pattern. And that pattern is best seen by writing it out. So what I'm going to do is show you that with our first function, f of x. So if I wanted to find f prime of x, what I would do is say, okay, this is clearly a product. It's this function 5x squared times this function ln of x. Okay, what I'm going to do is write out that product twice. So 5x squared ln x and then plus 5x squared ln x. First thing gets a prime, second thing gets a prime. That's how I've remembered the product rule for years and years, instead of as this complicated formula, which, you know, it's really not that complicated. I just remember the pattern instead. And now this is saying f prime can be thought of instead as these two pieces, each of which have a simpler derivative in them. For example, the derivative of 5x squared, by now I'm sure you already can do it in your head, is 10x. So over here I'm left with 10x ln x. Now on this side, I have 5x squared, I'm not finding the derivative of that, times the derivative of ln x, which we learned last time was 1 over x. Of course, this can be simplified, right, because 1 over x is going to cancel, this term, this x right here is going to cancel with one of these, so I'll end up with 10x ln x plus 5x. It may look like there's more you can do with that, you can a little bit, but really, this is a fine answer. I mean, you could factor out, if you wanted to, a 5x here. And then you'd be left with uh, 2 ln x plus 1. That's valuable to know in case your textbook or something else you're working on writes it that way. These are equivalent. But really, either one is OK. Now let's take a look at the function in b. b is a little bit different. Now, it's clearly a product. But there's actually a couple ways to approach this. So when I, I'm going to try the product rule first, but after I do that, I'm going to show you something else. Because again, it's obviously a product. We have right here a function times a function. So I can say, okay, g prime of x for b is going to equal x squared plus 1 prime times x cubed minus 3. So first thing gets prime plus, write the product out again, x squared plus 1 times x squared minus 3 excuse me, x cubed minus 3, second thing gets a prime. Okay, so product twice, first thing gets a prime, second thing gets a prime. So right here I can say, okay, this is 2x, because I know the derivative of 1 is 0, times x cubed minus 1, or minus 3, plus x squared plus 1, and then this is 3x squared, and again, minus 3 has a derivative of 0, so it's gone. Now, since the original problem was written with parentheses and not completely simplified out, that's fine. You can leave it um, this way. But to me, this could be simplified and it probably come out pretty nice. So I'm going to say, uh, let me distribute this 2x. And I have 2x to the fourth minus 6x. And over here, I'm going to distribute this 3x squared. So this would be plus 3x to the fourth plus 3x squared. And now when I go through and actually try to uh, simplify this down, I have a couple of like terms. And so notice I have a 2x to the 4th and a 3x to the 4th. That gives me 5x to the 4th, a plus 3x squared, and a minus 6x. It's my preference. Personally, I think this looks a lot nicer, a lot cleaner. So that would be my derivative for this function. Notice how before derivatives tended to get uh, more simple. You may notice now sometimes the derivatives actually look a little more complicated. Now, I alluded to the fact that there was another method with this problem. 
I'm hoping that you caught it, or at least you noticed something different here. When you look closely, this is a binomial. This is binomial. You can use FOIL to simplify this. What if I was to simplify this before taking the derivative? Well, I'd have x squared times x cubed, that'd be x to the fifth. So first, outer would be minus 3 times x squared. Inner would be x cubed. And then last, so first, outer, inner, last, would be minus 3. If I wrote it that way, and I took the derivative, this is just a polynomial, right? So I could say, well, g of x squared is going to be derivative of this, which is 5x to the fourth, minus derivative of this is minus 3 times, bring down the 2, keep the x, and then bring down the 3 here, be a 2 left, so it'd be plus 3x squared. And then the minus 3, the derivative is 0. So what would this simplify out to? Maybe you already see it. It's 5x to the 4th minus 6x plus 3x squared. It's the same thing. Which one was easier? Well, I think that depends on uh, your preference, right? Because here I had to do the step of foiling first, but then derivative was pretty easy. Here I didn't have to foil at first. I could just apply the product rule. And then in the end, I still had to do a little bit of algebra. So you're going to have these choices on your own. I don't mind which method you choose. Um, some methods like the first one, we had no other method. There's nothing else you could do. But on a problem like this, it's up to you to pick which one you like better. Finally, looking at C. C cannot be simplified either. It's the product for sure. It's the product of 10x squared and ex. So to find this derivative, I'm going to say k prime of x is, I'm going to write out the product twice, 10x squared e the x plus, write it out again, 10x squared, e to the x. This gets prime, this gets prime. And now I start taking the derivative, right? Because I've simplified it down into a couple of easier problems. So this, the 2 comes down, we get 20x times e to the x plus 10x squared. And what's the derivative of e to the x? Hopefully you remember, it's an interesting function. It stays e to the x. Now this is one where, gosh, you could leave it this way, but just like before, like the problem uh, in A, we could probably simplify it a bit and make it look nicer. We've taken the derivative. This, this is certainly an answer. But you see both terms have an e to the x. They both have a 10 in them because this is 2 times 10, and they both have an x. It might be nice to write it this way instead and say this is 10x e to the x times, and then what would be left here would just be a 2 plus... And then there's just an x left here. That's kind of a nice way to write it, I think. And you can double check me. Look, multiply this and this, you get 20x e to the x. Yes, multiply this and this, you get 10x squared e to the x. I don't know which one really is nicer, but again, you want to be comfortable with writing it one way or the other because textbooks and other websites maybe that you use to practice with might write the answer this way as opposed to this way. But I personally, I think this looks a little bit better. As you can see, if you just remember the pattern here, finding the derivative of products isn't that bad. The thing you want to avoid is assuming that you just take the derivative of the first thing and times the derivative of the second. So it is never, never, never true. Well, okay, there might be special cases, but you might as well assume it's never true that if I have f times g, it will not equal, when I try to take the derivative, f prime times g prime. You know, that's the most common mistake. We have this pattern that comes out. It just happens to work this way using the limit definition. You can actually study why. But for us, we just got to really remember how to apply it. When we apply it, we just got to try to avoid this assumption here, which just, it would be nice if it worked that way, but it just doesn't.